Okay, welcome back. Uh, right now I'm going to do one more for the test for extras and one more problem. Uh, we'll call it problem three. Two speakers are driven by the same oscillator and emit sound of frequency 690 hertz. Their positions are at negative one zero meters and positive one zero meters. Assume the velocity of sound in the air is 345 meters per second. The questions are, where can the person stand on the x-axis to hear a relative maximum amplitude, a relative minimum amplitude? B, how about the same question for the y-axis? So where can the person stand on the y-axis for relative maximum and relative minimum? And then C, how about the same question for x equals one uh, meter vertical line? This question will help us down the future when we are doing light interference this topic and light interference are about the same thing it's kind of based on the same idea this is called sound interference so we are assuming here that the same oscillator is driving the two speakers and that the two speakers originally are in phase right so the concept we're going to use is that two waves when they are in phase uh, when they travel to a certain spot if the distance that they travel is different then they're going to be out of phase somehow right and when, if they are out of phase, they might completely destructively interfere, okay? So destructive interference will cause um, minimum amplitude, relative minimum, and uh, constructive interference will cause a maximum amplitude, okay? So I've set it up uh, in this problem so that the frequency is 690, and it happens to be double the velocity of sound in the air, uh, which is 345. So from this... We have velocity of sound is equal to wavelength times frequency. So this is 345. Uh, the frequency is 690. So what is the wavelength of the sound wave here? 345 divided by 690. Well, that's going to be 0.5, right? 0.5 meters. Okay, so let's erase this. This is positive one zero meters. Okay, and where can you be? So um, the, the criteria for constructive interference is that the change in distance, the difference of the distance traveled by the two waves, we can call it D2 minus D1, is equal to some integer multiple of their wavelength, N lambda. Okay. So if they are traveling to a certain spot, so let's say they are traveling to this spot right here. So this wave comes here. We'll call this the first speaker, and we'll call this the second speaker. So this is distance one, and then this is the distance traveled by the second wave, D2. So if I subtract their distance, D2 minus D1, I'm taking the absolute value here. Uh, the absolute value of the difference of their distance, if it's an integer multiple of their wavelength, that will create constructive interference. Constructive interference. And you will hear a relatively high uh, volume of sound. It's going to be called the central maximum. That's going to be the loudest sound that you could possibly hear. Okay, central maximum central maximum but there could be other spots that you could be at where the difference of the distances are integer mul multiple of wavelength you could be even on the other side right so you could be some arbitrary location here and then if i take the distance d2 and subtract d1 then i could still get an integer multiple of a wavelength right so what's the general equation well i'm gonna say let my position be x0 right on the x-axis what is the absolute value of the distance from me to the first speaker right then it'll just be x minus one right that's the absolute value of that distance then the distance between me and the uh, left speaker the second speaker that's going to be x minus minus one so if i take the difference between the two that should be equal to integer multiple of the wavelength. So that's going to be N lambda. 
right? So the equation becomes absolute value of x minus 1 minus absolute value of x plus 1 is equal to n lambda, right? Well, we already know there's only one spot that you can be where n is equal to 0, right? Where the distances are the same. So n is 0. n could be plus 1, n can be plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, any integer, right? So let's find any possible value where n could be 1, right? n is 1. So where is that going to be? Absolute value of x minus 1 minus absolute value of x plus 1. n is 1. That just gives me lambda, and the wavelength of the wave is 0.5. So where could that be? Well, probably it's somewhere in the middle here, right? So how are we going to solve this case? Well, if it is... Uh, in the middle, I'm going to have here an absolute value of x minus 1. Well, if I'm in the middle, this one becomes what? Since I'm to the left of x plus 1, right? Uh, I am a certain value such as, let's say, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 minus 1 is equal to what? Uh, some negative number, right? So in order to make it an absolute value, I'm going to have to say minus quantity x minus 1, right? So let's just solve any possible uh, places I can be between the two, right? So I could be minus x minus 1. So now if I am somewhere like a 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minus 1 is going to be negative 0.5, and a negative of that is 0.5. So that's the distance, the absolute value of the distance. So then I subtract from that. What do I need here? Well, if my answer is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 1 is already going to give me uh, positive, so I don't need to do anything with that. And then this is equal to 0 0.5, right? So now solve for x. So I have negative x plus 1, negative x minus 1, right, uh, is equal to 0 0.5, negative 2x, <coughs> so negative 2x, um, and then 1 and 1 cancel equal 0 0.5, x equals to what? Uh, this is going to be uh, one half. One half divided by two is going to be one fourth. Negative one fourth. So that's negative 0.25. So that means the location is here. Negative 0.125 here. Uh, okay, what if I want to answer on the opposite side? On the opposite side of the x axis, what do I do? Well, all I do is basically I switch the two, right? I say absolute value of x plus 1 minus absolute value of x minus 1. And so you can see by symmetry here, absolute value of x plus 1 minus absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 0 0.5. And then you're going to have the same kind of argument. This one is going to be the same minus. This one is going to be negative of itself. So it's going to be negative x minus 1, 0 0.5, the 2 is going to be positive, you're going to have 2x, 1 is going to cancel 1, 0.5, x is going to equal what? 1 fourth. So by symmetry, there is, a, there is a maximum here, there is a maximum here. This is called the first order maximum, right? So 0.25 meter over there, right? Well, where else can we be? Okay, where, where we are hearing the maximum. The, we probably can be um, a little bit farther and a little bit farther, right? So that's going to be the second order maximum, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to put here uh, 2 for n, and then we're going to have 1 here, and then we go through the solution. We have 1, we're going to have 1, and then x is going to equal negative 1 half right, which is negative 0.5. And then I'm going to have another symmetric one there, which is 0.5. So I'm going to have negative 0.5 here, negative 0.5. And then I'm going to have another one here, which is 0.5. That's second order maximum, right? Now what if I go one more, I put n is 3. And then you, you can see what's going to happen. This is going to be 1.5 now. I put n is 3. And then 1.5 divided by 2, that's 0.75. So 
So right here is 0 0.75, and then right here is 0 0.75, and then if I go, uh, if I put n equals 4, then I'm going to have here 4 times a half, so then I'm going to have 2, I'm going to have 2, so actually at the location of the speakers is the fourth order maximum, okay, at the location of the speakers. So now what if I go beyond the speaker? So if I go beyond here, how am I going to solve that? Either one, if I find either solution, right, uh, I can by symmetry argue that the other side is the same answer. So what if I do like this? Um, x minus 1. So if my answer is some answer such as, let's say, uh, positive 2, how can I get rid of the absolute values, right? 2 minus 1, it's already positive, so it is itself. Minus, and then if I, the answer is 2, 2 minus minus 1, so that's going to be 3. So, uh, so I'm just going to keep that as itself, x plus 1. So if it's 2 minus 1, 1, minus 2 plus 1, um, that's 3. That's going to give me a negative answer, right? So this one is going to give me the solution on the left side. And then by symmetry, I would have the answer on the right side, right? So this one is going to be what? Uh, maybe the first, fifth order maximum, right? So it's going to be 5 times 0 0.5. What do we find here? Well, look what interesting thing happens. The x ends up canceling, right? x minus x is 0. And then what ends up happening, x minus x, negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. So what is the meaning of that, negative 2? Well, if you think about it a little bit further, you get to see that no matter where you're standing here, where you are standing here, right, the, your distance from this speaker and your distance from this speaker is the same, the difference between those, right? So imagine you are at 10, 0 meters. How far are you from the right speaker? You are 9 meters from the right speaker, right? It's at 1, 0. How many meters are you from the left speaker? 11 meters. What's the difference in the distance? 2 meters. No matter where you are standing, no matter where you are standing, it's 2 meters. So what does that mean? There aren't any possible different maximums you can have there. It's either a maximum or a minimum or somewhere in between, right? Well, now the question to ask is, is two meters, is two meters an integer multiple of the wavelength? If it is, then everywhere there will be a maximum. Every there, there, everywhere there will be a maximum. So what is the answer? Two and a uh, half? n is equal to 4. Actually, that is a maximum, fourth order maximum, right? So basically what's going to happen is you hear a central maximum, first order, second order, third order, and any of the speakers is fourth order maximum, and then after that, everywhere, fourth order maximum, okay? So, uh, and then uh, same thing's going to happen on this side as well as that side, okay? How about destructive interference now?